In this video, we're going to talk about air masses, what they are, what types there are, and how they can affect the North American continent. So first, what are air masses? So an air mass is a large body of similar air, which means that the air has similar temperatures, similar relative humidities, and similar dew points. Now air masses are actually named off of where they start. So if you have an air mass that originates over an ocean, it's going to be called maritime. If it originates over a continent, it's going to be called continental. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first type now. So the first five types of air masses, and all five types in fact, are maritime tropical, maritime polar, continental tropical, continental polar, and the last one is continental arctic. Now as far as which ones affect most of North America, usually it's going to be these four, maritime polar, continental polar, maritime tropical, and continental tropical. The continental arctic generally stays pretty far north, at least for more, most of North America and even Central America. And it only comes down sometimes. Now, if you ever hear the term arctic blast, that might exactly be what's going on, is that arctic air mass is actually descending south. So for the most part today, we're going to focus on these four down here. Now, why do air masses move? Well, generally they can move based on, you know, global wind currents. The Coriolis effect, westerlies, easterlies. So the prevailing westerlies in the United States, at the very least, are one of the major wind belts. So most wind in the United States moves from west to east. That's why it's called westerlies. Now in Central America, it can actually move from east to west, so they're called easterlies. And in really far north, 60 degrees north or more, it's also easterlies. You can even see the term polar easterlies up there near the North Pole. So those are the general things that move air masses. But other factors can also move air masses as well, including low and high pressure regions, which we'll see here in a bit. Now first, let's talk about maritime tropical. So maritime means it forms over the ocean, and tropical means it's warm. So the name of the air mass can actually tell you what temperature and what humidity levels are in the air mass. So a maritime tropical, tropical would be warm moist. Now for the, at least the United States, the two regions you're going to find maritime tropical are in the Gulf of Mexico and on the other side in the Pacific off the coast of California and Baja California. Now generally during the summer these warm tropical moisture laden air masses can bring hot humid weather to the southern United States. During the wintertime, they can actually bring humid and slightly warmer weather. Now, maritime polar also has the word maritime, so it does form over the ocean, but it's polar, which means it's colder in temperature. So this colder, higher moisture air, it can form over here off the west coast of the United States and Canada, or it can also form on the other side on the east coast of the United States or Canada. Now generally, which of the two is more effective of the weather on North America? It's going to be the western one. Because remember, the prevailing winds in the, at this latitude are moving from west to east. So the maritime polar air mass that hangs off the west coast in the Pacific is generally moving into the land every once in a while, a lot, a lot more often than the east coast maritime polar one does. Now what happens if a maritime polar air mass comes towards you, generally rain, fog, cooler temperatures, and um, maybe even stormy conditions, especially if it meets up with uh, maritime tropical or warmer temperatures. Now, here's what maritime polar might actually look like. If anyone's been to Seattle, it rains there a lot, there might be a reason why. It has to do with maritime polar. Air masses right off the coast, lots of moisture is brought in, and if it's cold, well, it's very easy to form clouds at cold temperatures. Now for continental tropical, it's got the word continental, so it forms over land. It's got tropical, which means it's hot. Yes, continental tropical is a hot, dry air mass. Now generally, these form in the summertime for the most part in the south and southwestern U.S. Um, and for the North American, North American continent, the continental tropical air mass is actually the smallest of all the other air masses. And um, the reason why is, well, it really doesn't have that much area. It generally forms only in the southwest United States and over parts of Mexico. Now, what can it do? Well, if it, a continental tropical air mass moves in your area, you generally have hot, dry weather. And uh, if you live in the southwest, 
you definitely know there is hot, dry weather in the southwest most of the year. Now, it doesn't mean it's stuck here forever. Just because this picture says continental tropical right here, it doesn't mean it can't move. And in fact, it does move at, during certain parts of the year. It can be pushed up, pushed down, or even uh, pushed inwards by either a maritime tropical or even a polar air mass coming in. Now, what I mean by being pushed around? Well, if you live in the southwest or you've been there, during certain parts of the summer, there's actually something called monsoon season, where instead of tr uh, maritime, or sorry, sorry, instead of continental tropical air mass over you, other air masses like maritime tropical move in, and they can actually bring heavy rains. So, if you see the word monsoon, technically monsoon is just a shift in the wind. Now, when it comes to monsoon season for the southwest, it's the prevailing west wind shifts to coming from the south instead. So going back to this continental tropical air mass, it actually gets pushed northwards, and this maritime tropical air mass actually comes in off the coast of the ocean and onto land. So instead of a hot, dry southwest, you get a hot, moist southwest. It can also happen for the Gulf of Mexico air over here. It can also be pulled in by that monsoon wind. Now you might be wondering, well, why would the wind shift? Well, there's a couple of factors that can affect this. For one, during the summertime, Earth tilt for the northern hemisphere is at a higher tilt. It's so more direct sunlight, which can change the global weather patterns. Also, uh, because the southwest during the summer is very hot, that hot air can create low pressure, which can make air rise and lead to turbulence and even storms and thunderstorms on its own. Now, let's get to our next air mass, which is continental polar. Continental means that it forms over land. It's also dry. Polar means that it's cold. And yes, continental polar tends to form up north over parts of Canada and up northern United States. Generally, they bring cool, dry air to the central part of the United States. Now, um, what happens if a continental polar air mass hits maybe another air mass, like maritime tropical coming up from the Gulf of Mexico? Well, that's when you can get things like tornadoes. In fact, that just so happens to happen, or that just so happens to be right around where Tornado Alley is, right where this polar air mass meets the maritime tropical air mass. If, even if you don't get tornadoes, you can get thunderstorms and strong winds and definitely a lot of rain from a cold front moving in. Now, the last type, Arctic. So you could have CA as continental Arctic. Even if you just had an A, you may see that diagram. That's still Arctic. Even for the Antarctic, it's actually CAA or just AA for the abbreviations for them. But imagine everything that I said for continental polar, dry and cold, but even more cold. That's basically it for continental Arctic. Now, I did mention one thing about air masses that can be moved around. What can move air masses around? Well, sometimes cyclones and anticyclones can move air around as well. It's not just global circulation patterns and the Coriolis effect. Um, so if you have a large area of very low pressure air, sometimes air masses can get pulled in with that low pressure air. And so if you have a hurricane coming towards you, well, one, get out, but two, um, that hurricane can also pull in air. So for example, if there is continental tropical air over here, dry air can actually pull it slightly in and slightly around, obviously still affected by the Coriolis effect. Now the opposite is true for an anticyclone. If you have a large area of high pressure, well, that can actually push certain air masses out of the way. So for example, if there was a maritime polar air mass over here off the coast of the United States, and this high pressure is moving in, it could actually push that air mass over the land instead of over the water. So for low pressure, the air is rising up, tends to bring things towards it. For anti-cyclones or high pressure, they tend to have sinking air, which means it pushes things away from it. Now, generally with high pressure, you're not going to get any storms or clouds. Obviously,